Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start doing some more advanced things with Network X. I am going to try to go slowly, uh, but if you get lost at any point, just pause the video, take your time and make sure you understand what's happening at each stage. And if you are coming to this video for the fir a first time and having not looked at any of the videos in the past, I highly encourage you to go back and look at some of these earlier videos, specifically my one on storing data uh, in XML and importing it into Python using element tree. That's going to be what we're doing in this video in order to demonstrate a very important feature of developing a network map using network X, and that is changing the node color. We're going to not only change the node color in this video, we're also going to create a, uh, uh, a way for changing the node color based on a specific attribute that a node has in our Python script. And we're going to do that using the attribute of gender. So I want you to look over here and take a look first at this XML file I have. This is the way in which I've decided to render the data uh, with relationship tags, just like we saw before with a person one attribute, a person two attribute, a gender one attribute, and a gender two attribute. The gender one is gonna to correspond to person one, and the gender two is going to correspond to person two. This is gonna be very important because I'm going to use these attributes later in the video to demonstrate how we can pass those attributes into Network X, and using a couple different functions actually get network X to change the color of a node based on that specific attribute. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've already got this stuff right here. Uh, there's no sense in me repeating this. Uh, we got the file object, which is going to be our string that is going to tie to uh, 10 underscore sample underscore data dot XML. We're going to create the graph using G and we're going to also just as we did before, create our names list so that we can actually create our edges from a list. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a tree object again. We're going to make that tree object uh, the parsed out file of our XML file. And then we're going to make a root object and that is going to be tree.get root. And this should all be familiar to you uh, because I spoke about this at length in my XML video. So what we need to do now is just as before, we need to get the data from our XML file. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say for item in root dot iter, it's going to allow us to iter, uh, iterate over uh, the tag relationship. We want to gather an object named person one, and that's going to be item dot attrib, which is going to be the attribute. And we want that to be person one. We are going to do the same thing for person two. And at this point, we are going to simply do what we did before. We are going to names.append and we are going to append as a tuple. And we're going to do person one and person two. All of this is just like what I did before. Now what we're going to do is we are going to do uh, g.add edges from names and we are going to draw that map using nx.draw. We want to draw specifically the g graph and we want to plot dot show what's being seen. So this is just to give you a sense of what we did before. All of this should look familiar. Let's go ahead and pass our with labels argument and set that to true. That way we can see labels in our graph. Now, the way in which you change a node color is by passing the argument node color equals, uh, let's just change it to red. And when we do that, we see that our nodes have changed to the color red. This is great if you want to have a social network that is some color other than blue and you want all the nodes to be the same. But oftentimes when you are developing a network, especially a complex network, you want to change the node color based on a specific attribute. So if it's a person uh, and if it is a person, that specific gender of a person, if it's an institution, if it's a place, um, and doing this is rather complicated in Network X, but Network X is a very powerful, powerful module. So com uh, complexity is kind of the name of the game. So what we're going to do is we are going to create two new objects. We are going to create gender one 
And we are going to grab that attribute from this XML file. And we are going to grab gender two so that we can work with all the metadata that we need. And now we're going to do something a little different. We are going to add to the, um, to the G graph, the node, and that node is going to be person one. And we are going to set the, create a new attribute. And that attribute is going to be gender. And gender of person one is going to be equal to the, uh, to gender one. We're going to do the same thing for person two. Gender is going to be equal to gender two. And now what we have is we have nodes that contain attributes. And this is very, very important because it's going to be these attributes stored in the network X data that allow us to start manipulating it to create node colors that are specific to a gender. So let's go ahead and keep this all as it is. I'm going to just clean this up a little bit, add that there, and I'm going to go outside of the for loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object. And the Pythonic way to do this is, py is color underscore map. And this is going to be equal to, and this is very important to get this correct, um, nx, I don't need a list. This is going to be equal to nx dot get node attributes. And that is a very powerful function in network X. And what that's going to let us do is call all the gender attributes and kind of get a sense of what's happening. So let's go ahead and just print off color maps. So you can see what's happening to the data in Python. I'm going to cancel all this out for right now. What we're seeing down here, this should be familiar to you, is a dictionary. We are seeing that Tom is a male, Jeff is a male, Jerry is a male, etc., and Sarah is female. That's fantastic. However, that data in and of itself doesn't tell Python to change the node color. Instead, we have to manipulate that data a little bit. And the way in which we're going to do that is we are going to iterate through that dictionary with a for loop. And we are going to change all the males to uh, blue and all the females to red. And I'm going to do this uh, step by step so you can kind of see what's happening to the data as we manipulate it. So we're going to say for the key in color map, we want to, uh, we want to, I'm going to print off the key so you can kind of see what the key actually is. What the key is going to do is it's going to return all the names. And to demonstrate what we're going to do, let me do this as well so you can kind of get a full sense of what's happening. We are also going to print up using this right here, uh, which is going to return the uh, the value. So color map key is equal for Tom is equal to male. And this is the data that we need to iterate across. And so what we're going to say is color map key. Uh, sorry. If color map key is equal to male colon, then we want color map key, <laughs> gotta be precise here, equal to blue. And I want you to take a moment and look at what I've done. I have a double equal sign here because we are checking to see if an object is equal to this. This is a single equal sign because we want to change that key. So if the person in our node list is a male, we want him to have a uh, a color of blue. If color map key equals female, then we want her to have a color map key equal to red. So what that is going to do is let me just show you right now. I'm going to print off the color map because remember, uh, dictionaries are mutable, which means that when we print off the color map here, in fact, I'll do it before and after so you can kind of see. When we print off this color map, it's going to be the same thing we saw before. Tom, male, Jeff, male, etc. Here, however, we're going to see Tom blue, Jerry blue, etc. As we can see down here, we have everything just as we want to see it. We have Sarah being equivalent to red and Tom being equivalent to blue. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new object. And this is the most important part. And this is going to be a list. And what it's going to say is that color map 
dot get. So it's going to get the color map and it's going to get the node. So it's going to go through uh, all of the nodes in G dot nodes and it's going to retrieve them. And what it's going to do is allow for us to uh, call upon uh, this object when we need to change the node color. And you're going to see that happen in just a second. Get all that out of the way. And so, great, we're going to change node color now to gender colors. And what this is going to do is it's going to look in this list and anytime it sees a blue color, it's going to change that node to the corresponding to that person to blue. Anytime it sees a red color that corresponds to a specific node, it's going to change that color uh, to red. So in other words, when it comes across Tom, he'll always be blue. When we come across Sarah, she'll always be red. So let's go ahead and run this. And sure enough, we see that happen. Sarah has changed to red and Jerry, Bob and Tom and Jeff all remain blue. So that's one of the ways in which you can uh, affect change, uh, make node color change depending upon attribute. And in a later video, when we start speaking about uh, the changing and how to change the, um, the color of edges based on attributes, we're going to see that this can be much more nuanced than a binary choice. It doesn't have to be just gender. It can be people, institutions, places, texts, and all these different items in our metadata can receive their own independent uh, color schema. But for right now, I just want you to get a sense of the principle here. And the principle here is rendering all of the metadata as a dictionary in Python to basically go through and change the node color based upon that dictionary. So if you didn't follow along uh, in real time as I went through this video, I encourage you to go through this video step by step and type out the code for yourself. And that way you get a sense of what is happening at each stage. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. We are going to actually change the node size based upon the frequency of a person appearing in our data. So for example, Jeff, Jerry, who appears twice, will receive a larger node than Tom, Bob, Sarah, or, uh, or Jeff. So we're going to work on that in the next video. For now, thank you for listening.